Subsumption Theory by David Paul Ossible David Paul Ossible was an American psychologist born in Brooklyn, New York. He did his undergraduate work at the University of Pennsylvania, which is his pre-med and psychology. He also graduated from medical school at Middlesex University. He earned his PhD in developmental psychology at the Columbia University and he was also influenced by the work of Piaget. His principal interests in psychiatry have been general psychopathology, ego development, drug addiction, and forensic psychiatry. He also served on the faculty at several universities and retired from academic life in 1973 and began his practice in psychiatry. He also published several textbooks in developmental and educational psychology and more than 150 articles. In 1976, he received a Thorndike Award for Distinguished Psychological Contributions to Education from the American Psychological Association. The Introduction to Subsumption Theory During meaningful learning, the person subsumes or organizes or incorporates new knowledge into old knowledge. So subsumption theory suggests that our mind has a way to subsume information in a hierarchical or categorical manner if the new information is linked or incorporated with prior knowledge or familiar patterns. So as a result, prior knowledge is given absolute importance. So teachers are encouraged to teach prior knowledge, knowledge first rather than new information to help information subsume. Advanced organizers also provide concepts and principles to the students directly in an organized format. The strategy of advanced organizers basically means to classify or categorize or arrange information as you proceed or advance to the next complex level. So we have four processes of meaningful learning, namely the derivative subsumption, correlative subsumption, superordinate learning, and the combinatorial learning. The derivative subsumptions, which means that new material or relationships can be derived from the existing structure. So information can be moved in the hierarchy or linked to other concepts or information to create new interpretations or meaning. For example, you have already acquired a basic concept such as tree having its trunk, branches, green leaves, and may have some kind of a fruit. Now, this time, you learn about a kind of a, of a tree that you have never learned before. For example, a persimmon tree that conforms to your previous understanding of tree. So your new knowledge of persimmon trees is attached to the concept of trees without substantially altering that concept in any way. So you had learned about the persimmon trees through the process of derivative subsumption. Next is the correlative subsumptions, which means that a new material is an extension or elaboration of what is already known. For example, you encountered a new kind of tree that has red leaves rather than the common leaves that are green. So in order for you to accommodate this new information, you have to alter or extend your concept of a tree to include the possibility of red leaves. Now you have learned about this new kind of tree through the process of correlative subsumption. So in sense, you might say that this is more valuable learning than that of the derivative subsumption since it takes you to um, um, a more higher level concept. Next is the superordinate learning which means that an individual is able to give a lot of examples of that concept but does not know the concept itself until it is taught. So for example, uh, you are well acquainted with maples. 
oaks, apple trees, and some other trees. But you did not know that all of these were examples of deciduous trees until it was taught to you. So in this case, you already knew a lot of examples of the deciduous trees, but did not know that it was kinds of deciduous trees until it was taught to you. Next is the combinatorial learning. So the first three learning processes all involve new information that attaches to a hierarchy at a level that is either below or above previously acquired knowledge. This combinatorial learning is different because it describes a process by which the new idea is derived from another idea that is neither higher nor lower in the hierarchy, but at the same level. For example, you already learn about how fish eggs are fertilized. And you might relate it to a previously acquired knowledge about pollination of plants. Now, both of these ideas are different, but both of them is also related to the process of breeding. Now, you could think of this as learning by analogy, since analogy is a comparison between two things, typically for the purpose of explanation or clarification. The advanced organizer. So, advanced organizers are used to relate prior information to new concepts. They are part of possible subsumption theory that contends that meaningful learning and permanent retention of material is a function of the stability of existing anchoring ideas. So, advanced organizers can be classified into two, which is the expository or the comparative. The first of the two classifications is the expository teaching. So while presenting new material, it also uses the beginning of the lesson. It also presents several encompassing generalizations where detailed contents will be added later. So for example, the teacher discusses the process of the absorption of water and minerals into the plants through the top and fibrous root system. So next is the comparative teaching, which simply means comparing, but for further elaboration, it is also useful when the knowledge to be presented is new to the learner. So it also compares new material with knowledge already known by emphasizing the similarities between two types of materials and showing the information that is to be learned. So Osable's teaching approach is deductive in nature. So for example, a teacher shows the similarities and differences among two major root systems, the top root system and the fibrous root system. So the teacher compared and contrasted the two major root systems. The deductive teaching model using the advanced organizers for the teacher to be able to deliver her uh, lessons well. So the first step is the teacher presents a general statement or abstraction of the lesson. So the teacher commonly gives the general overview of the lesson in the beginning of the discussion. Step two, the teacher explains important terms. So this is where the lesson begins. So she or he may uh, explain some important vocabulary words or terms that are uh, very essential to understanding the, the concept or the lesson. Step three, the teacher presents examples. It is where she or he presents example for the for the students for them to be able to understand the lesson more clearly and then step four the people study the specific examples and this is where the students will be able to acquire uh, the knowledge
uh, in the lesson. In conclusion, Osobel's theory is concerned with how individuals learn large amount of meaningful material from verbal or textual presentations in a school setting as opposed to theories developed based on experimental settings. Therefore, learning is based upon the kinds of superordinate, representational, and combinatorial processes that occur during the presentation of information. So thank you for listening. This is Charmaine Lamar from the BS Ed 2 English class. Good day.